again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me today Russ Resnick. Russ is the worldwide segment manager for one and two socket rack servers. Thanks David for having me. Very good. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the Lenovo Think System SR570. This is our new uh, one new two socket server. Um, Russ, who, who's the sort of customer that's, that's going to be interested in this in this system? This server is really for customers who want some of the features of a mainstream high performance server, but really don't need to uh, need all of those features. So this server uh, supports NVMe drives, has 16 DIMM slots, and two sockets for the Xeon scalable processor, mm -hmm. but doesn't support all the features of, say, the SR630, which is our mainstream performance. Two, so it's a, a nice balance between server. the SR630 and the SR530, which Correct. is our entry system, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. okay. Um, and we're going to go through some of those components, of course, as we go through the system. Um, so, Russ, let's, let's go through the, the front of the system first. Mm -hmm. um, so, you can see here on the front, um, the, the server supports uh, two and a half inch drives. Um, here's um, one of the, some of the drives here. Um, the, the server supports either four or eight, or you can even have up to ten, ten. two and a half mm -hmm. inch drives along the front. Right, and yeah. up to four of those drives can be NVMe drives. Right, for on, on, on the 10. On the uh, 10 bay arrangement. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, and the server also supports three and a half inch yeah, drives. Four too. three and a half inch drives. Right, mm -hmm. and that's either simple swap or hot swap uh, drive bays. Mm -hmm. Yep, and if you choose, you can actually configure the system without any drive bays at all um, and just rely on the M.2 for, for boot. Mm -hmm. um, and then later, if you wish to, you can upgrade to, to the eight drive, um, two and a half inch with the field upgrade later on. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quite quite versatile in the, in the choices um, on the server. Um, now, Russ, the ports along on the side? Yeah, we have uh, two USB ports on the front here. Uh, we have a VGA port also in this uh, model, in this uh, specific server, it's missing, but there would be either a blank or a VGA port. Mm -hmm. uh, this USB port here, as you can see, has a little wrench, which means it can be used with our mobile app uh, that runs on your phone or tablet that can uh, talk to the X-Clarity controller that's on the motherboard for doing uh, out-of-band management uh, direct to the server. So for lo local management, if you've mm -hmm. got this in your data center and you need to do management right there in front of the system, you can plug your phone or your tablet via a cable mm -hmm. directly to that system. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Okay. Um, and now there's also the uh, display, the panel here, the operator panel. Correct. Uh, with some um, LEDs. Uh, for system indicators and so on. Uh, and there's an ID button here as well that uh, allows you to identify uh, the system. You can enable that blue light remotely through Xclarity Administrator. Right. So you know exactly which device you need to work on by enabling that light. Right. And we also support a service label. So if a customer wants to attach a, a label for, to label the server in their data center, mm -hmm. they can do that. Yep. David, before we uh, take a look at the back of the server, let me show you here the security oh, bezel. Yes. Yes, yeah, so the security bezel um, is a good good option for customers who are looking for physical security on the front of their system. It simply installs on the front of the system like like, like so. Russ, what's this useful for? So it has a a key lock that so the customer can uh, secure the especially the media in the server, uh, which is great in uh, say retail or medical environments where the data stored on the server may. Uh, uh, it needs to be secured. All right. So, and of course, once in, to get access, you just simply unlock it, and then it comes off again, less like that, like so. Right. Yep. Okay. So that's the the front of the system. Um, let's uh, spin this around and have a look at the okay. back. Okay. So this server has on this side. You can see there's two uh, two hot swap power supplies. That's great. Now, in, the, in in this system we're using for the video, these these are 1100 watt power supplies. But this server only supports the, the five, in fact, only needs right. the 570, 550, 550. and 750 watt power right. supply. Yeah, so these are not, not normal for, for yeah. this, this server. But these are the same common server, uh, power supplies, rather, that are used on our other Think System servers. In fact, that's a good point. Um, a lot of the components you see in this server are actually shared, are common, with the full line of Think System servers. That's correct. So that makes mm -hmm. it very easy. Um, as an administrator to maintain parts and maintain drivers as well. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, so then next to that, uh, two USB 3 ports to complement the ones on the front. Uh, a VGA port is standard, two 1 gig uh, Ethernet ports, Ethernet ports mm -hmm. and then a standard um, management port, again, RJ45, right. 1 gig. And then on this side is a LOM slot, and what we have installed here is uh, a two port uh, 1 gig LOM adapter. Right, and we also uh, support two, uh, 
a two port 10 gig adapter, mm -hmm. both SFP Plus and RJ45, and all those LOM adapters are common with the rest of the Think System servers as well. Yeah, okay. And now, on, on top of all those are the slots. This server supports uh, up to three PCIe mm -hmm. slots. Um, the, in this configuration, there are three uh, by eight slots. Right, low profile. L low profile, yes. Um, you can also support configurations with a full height mm -hmm. slot um, and another uh, low profile slot if you want. That's if you right. Want, want, if you have the need for the um, the full height mm -hmm. uh, PCIe slot. Yeah. Right. All right, so that's the back of the system. Let's open up inside and have a look. All right. Easy to remove cover, of course. So, Russ, the uh, processors. We, have a, we support a pair of uh, Xeon scalable processors up to about 150 watts. This is the new uh, Intel Xeon scalable family. That's of correct. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. And we have 16 DIMM slots, which is uh, you know, per socket, uh, uh, you know, consistent with the same number of DIMMs uh, per socket, mm -hmm. unlike some others we've seen in the industry. Right. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of flexibility here for customers who... Uh, may have had 16 uh, DIMM uh, configurations in their previous products and they want to continue with those, uh, they can do that without having to buy the uh, SR630 that supports up to 24 DIMMs. Right, okay. So there's, there's a good balance of, mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of cost savings and performance here. That's correct. Yeah, okay. Um, so up to 16 DIMM slots, two mm -hmm. processors. This server, of course, has one processor installed mm -hmm. and we have a total of 12 DIMMs installed. Um, now, other features to point out, this server has a support for hot swap fans. Uh, when you have one processor installed, there are four fans installed. When you have two processors installed, um, then there are six two, fans. There's two more yeah, fans. Two more fans. Mm -hmm. They come with, with the, the option upgrade, the processor upgrade. Um, if you do have um, 10, two and a half inch drive bays, then the six fans are actually standard okay. to provide the cooling needed mm -hmm. for, for six drives. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, I would point out these are hot swap drives. So hot, hot, swap hot, hot swap fans. That's correct. So unlike the SR530, the entry system, this has enter enterprise features such as hot, hot swap. swap pans. Um, it also has the uh, light path diagnostics function, where, and that means that each of the major components like memory and processors and the fans and power supplies, they all have an individual LED. So if there is a fault, then there'll be an LED uh, that pops up on the front and then it will direct you to the individual component that has a, has a fault. And of course the Xclarity com controller can be programmed for uh, sending alerts remotely as right. well. So that's, that's another one of the enterprise features that's available in mm -hmm. the, the SR570 over the, the entry system, the 530. That's right. Yeah. We also have uh, the SATA ports for the uh, simple now, swaps. these are NV NVMe, right? No, the NVMe are over oh, here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's all right. These yeah. are the SATA ports yeah. for the SATA drive support. And then, as you pointed out, we have four uh, SATA, uh, four NVMe ports here. To connect us, yeah. To connect to the uh, uh, front for the four NVMe uh, drive support. So if you did have, if you mm -hmm. did have the, the 10, 2.5-inch drive configuration, Two of those drives could be right, NVMe such, such drives, as we have here said, with yeah. an, an, an NVMe drive. We yeah. have here that would go over here with the ten drive bay. It actually goes into a bays we call any bay, which means that they support SAS or SATA or, or NVMe. NVMe. That's yeah. right. And those those connections on the back plane are routed uh, down to to the NVMe ports. Mm -hmm. NVMe connectors just here. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So at the back of the system, um, the the space for the um, PCIe um, adapters. Let me remove this this uh, riser card. So you can see this is uh, one of the one of the configurations that's available. This is a uh, PCIe by 16 um, adapter slot. Um, next to that, Russ, this is the M.2 adapter. Right. So we the M.2 adapters uh, for M.2 boot devices. Mm -hmm. It comes in two flavors. One is uh, got a hardware RAID controller on it, and the other is just a single M.2. That appears to be the dual. Yes, yes. So the dual, the this is the dual controller. adapter, mm -hmm. which, of course, by its name, has two M.2 drives and, um, attached to it, one either side. Mm -hmm. yep. And a hardware RAID controller. Right. The, also available is the single adapter, which just has one M.2 drive mm -hmm. um, if you don't need the redundancy capabilities of the, of the dual. All right, so uh, I think it's submitted. Uh, one more thing to point out, um, just oh. like our full line of Think System servers, uh, this, this system does have uh, TPM... Uh, uh, the TPM support. is soldered down yep. to the motherboard, yeah, for, but for, for our Bridge. customers in China, uh, we have an optional TCM module here, which right. can be plugged in, which disables the TPM 
and uh, then al uh, allows the customer to use the TCM. And, and those once are, it's those plugged in, security it's, features. That's right? right. That's for security features that could be in the OS or in an application. Mm. And of course, this module, once plugged in, is bound to the board, so it's not like you can pull it out and use it elsewhere. All right, very good. Yep. Okay, so that's the SR530. Now, Russ, if we're looking for more information, just go to LenovoPress.com mm -hmm. yep. and check out the product guide for yeah, the there's SR570. Yeah, the product guide there, and there's a 3D tour, a variety of other mm -hmm. things, data sheet is there. Mm -hmm. So check all that out. So, Russ, thanks very much for that. Th thank you for having me. Hope you found the video useful, and we will see you later. Thanks. Bye.